Hello, my name is Dakota Castillo, and today I will be discussing with you all of the experimental methods of measuring courtship behavior in transgenic Alzheimer Drosophila melanogaster. To begin with, I'd like to cover a little bit of background about Alzheimer's disease and why we use Drosophila melanogaster as our experimental species. As some of you might know, Alzheimer's disease is a neurodegenerative disorder that is characterized by the loss of motor function and memory. This is believed to be caused by the accumulation of amyloid beta-42 plaques. As shown in the figure, these plaques stem from the amyloid precursor protein, also known as the APP protein. This protein is cleaved twice by both beta secretase and gamma secretase. This cleaving process eventually produces fibrils that will collect to form extracellular plaques known as the amyloid beta-42 plaques. Now, when looking at Drosophila melanogaster as our transgenic model, we need to understand that there are two lines that will be um, that we will be testing in our experimentation. One is the ELOV-GAL4 line, and the other line is the AP human homolog line that I will be discussing in the next slide. As discussed in the previous slide, the APP protein is produced from the APP gene, which Drosophila does in fact have a homolog for. However, we are testing a human copy of the amyloid beta-42 gene in our flies. To drive this transgene, we have two different fly stocks. We have an ELOV-GAL4 line that produces the yeast transcription factor known as GAL4, and the other line carrying an upstream promoter sequence for GAL4 to start the transcription of the amyloid beta-42 transgene. This process is demonstrated in the figure below with the enhancer being our neuron-specific ELOV enhancer and our gene X corresponding to our human amyloid beta-42 transgene. In our experiment, our ELOV-GAL4 line is used as our parental control. And since ELOV is known as a neuron-specific enhancer, the GAL4 transcription factor is only expected to be produced in neuronal tissue such as the brain. In our Alzheimer's line with the human transgene, however, once this GAL4 protein is made, then it will target the upstream activation sequence, which will begin transcription for the human amyloid beta-42 transgene, causing the formation of APP proteins and neurons, and eventually the amyloid plaques that are characteristic in Alzheimer's disease. Again, since ELOV is a neuron-specific enhancer, we should only expect to see the plaques present in neuronal tissues such as the brain. So with all this background information, we can finally ask the question, why should we study the behavior of Alzheimer's flies? The first signs of Alzheimer's is with memory loss due to neurodegeneration in specific regions of the brain. Based on this information, we look to determine the learned memory of rejection within Alzheimer's flies when compared to our ELOV control flies. In Ejima Ando and Ejima study, they explain how the function of memory loss in Alzheimer's is due to the buildup of the amyloid plaques, since our transgenic flies have the arctic mutated APP gene that causes those plaques. We wish to determine the significance of memory loss that is caused by the overproduction of these plaques. Similarly to Robbie et al.'s experiment, we will be tracking their courtship behavior, but in our experiment, it will be used to determine whether there is a distinct memory loss with rejection between our control line and our Alzheimer's line. To conduct our experiment, we first set up an experimental apparatus to collect the data we needed. We used two identical Canon video cameras that had a constant power supply so that we knew the cameras wouldn't die during the experimentation. Additionally, we had one LED light bar overhead where we knew we were going to record the flies mating interactions. The light was wrapped in a piece of paper to reduce its intensity as well as keep the glare down on the video. Lastly, we had a plain piece of paper to provide a bright background for when we were recording the flies interactions. With collecting the flies, we had to check every day from individual stocks to make sure we were collecting virgin flies. We knew we were collecting virgin flies due to the color of their exoskeleton, which indicates the relative time frame that the fly hatched. Every virgin male fly was collected and kept individually away from all other flies and labeled the day that it was collected. Additionally, all female flies were collected and kept in approximate groups of 10 and labeled with the date they were collected as well. Both the male and female flies were stored for approximately four to seven days to allow for maturing before they were used in our fly courtship assay. For older flies, they were kept isolated for 20 to 21 days for training and testing. In our experiment, two types of wells were used for collecting courtship data. The first well is at the top of the screen, which is a clear acrylic well. 
These wells were used for our mating procedure due to the clear visibility they produce when trying to playback video at high speeds to determine whether a pair of flies had mated or not. Additionally, when mating, we wish to have roughly 10 to 14 pairs of virgin ELA flies in individual wells due to the success rate of mating in these flies only being approximately 50%. This makes the use of the four wheel plates more applicable for matings so that space is conserved in comparison to using the three wheel plates. Lastly, the porcelain wells that you see at the bottom right hand corner were used for our courtship behavior assay. These wells showed clear visibility and had less shadow interference than the acrylic wells that were used for mating. When collecting our courtship assay data, we first needed to collect mated females so that they may be used for training. We did this by completing steps one and two of the flow diagram above. As stated previously, we wish to use 10 to 14 pairs of flies for mating due to the relatively low success rate that they had. Once the flies were transferred to the clear acrylic wells, they were isolated in a closed door room and recorded for an entire hour. Once the hour was completed, we reviewed the footage to determine which pairs of flies successfully mated. Once this was determined, we collected the successfully mated females into individual vials with food and stored them overnight. The female flies that were stored overnight were then used the next day in our courtship assay. First, the females were placed into wells, paired up with virgin males. These pairs of flies were left alone and recorded for an entire hour in a closed door room. Additionally, virgin males that acted as shame control were placed in identical wells for this entire hour of recording. Once the hour was completed, the now trained males were transferred to new porcelain wells and both the trained as well as the shame control were recorded for 10 minutes, which we called the testing period. After this, all the data was collected and stored so that we could score the fly's courtship behavior. When it came time to score the fly's courtship behavior, we would look at the first 10 minutes of training, the last 10 minutes of training, and the 10 minutes we allowed for testing. We would write down the amount of time it took for the flies to start courting, the amount of their courtship duration, their copulation latency time, and lastly, whether they made it or not. Finally, the flies were given a courtship index value, which has the equation of courtship duration divided by copulation latency. All of these units were written down in seconds. The five characteristics of courtship behavior that we use to score their courtship duration are are as follows, chasing, licking, wing fluttering, the 45 degree orientation of the male fly to the female fly, and as well as a copulation attempt. When looking at our results, it's important to clarify what exactly we mean when our flies are learning and how this pertains to the courtship index. As stated in the previous slide, the courtship index is the courtship duration value divided by the copulation latency value. A high courtship index value means that the males were courting the female flies for a good majority of the 10 minutes that we scored them, while a low courtship index value means that the males weren't courting the females much within the, that 10 minute time period. Learning in Drosophila is classified by a 40% decrease in the courtship index value when comparing the first 10 minutes of, to the last 10 minutes of courting. If the value is less than 40%, that means the courtship index value was higher than needed in the last 10 minutes of training to safely say that the flies have learned rejection. If the courtship index value is different by 40% or greater, then that means the flies have learned rejection and their courtship duration has decreased significantly in the last 10 minutes of training. Okay, this bar graph shows the courtship index averages in the training phase of our three groups, which is our ELAV young flies, our Alzheimer's flies, and our ELAV old flies. The orange bar corresponds to the first 10 minutes, while the gray bar corresponds to the last 10 minutes. When looking at our ELAV young flies, we can see a, cl a clear difference between the first 10 minutes and the last 10 minutes of, of their courtship index averages, which, and this difference approximates to around 38%, which is a close enough to the 40% we say we needed to safely say that the flies learned rejection. Now looking at our Alzheimer's young fly group, we can see an even greater difference, which approximates to 96%. This again allows us to safely say that our Alzheimer's young flies did learn rejection. However, when looking at our ELAV old flies and comparing that to our ELAV young flies, we see that our ELAV old flies show an interesting trend by the fact that their courtship index averages actually increased in the last 10 minutes of training. This could be due to the fact that older flies 
could have more be more aggressive towards their courting tactics and don't learn rejection as easily as our young Elav flies do. The bar graph on the left was done by Lynn et al's group in 2017 and as we can see the data does correspond with each other our within the first 10 minutes and last 10 minutes of our of our Elav young the courtship index is higher in the first than the last our AD young it's higher than the first and the last and our Elav old it does show the same trend where the last 10 minutes is higher than the first 10 minutes okay so this bar graph still has the same three groups as the la as the previous one however this is now the testing phase with the orange bar consisting of the train courtship index averages and the gray bar consisting of the shame courtship index averages. In both our Elav Young and AD Young groups, we can see that the shame control group, shame control flies did have a higher courtship index average than the trained one, ones. This indicates that both our young trained Elav and young trained Alzheimer's flies learned about rejection and were hesitant to court when introduced to a virgin female. However, our Elav old group again showed the opposite trend with our train flies having a higher courtship index than our shame control flies. This again to be, could be due to the fact that older flies could have more aggressive courtship behavior tactics than, and do not learn rejection as easily as younger flies do. Again, the bar graph on the left is from Lynn et al's group in 2017 and we can see the same trend in both in the two graphs with the Elav young group and the Elav old group however their Alzheimer's young group showed the opposite trend that ours did which could be due to the fact that they use the amyloid beta transgene by itself while we use the amyloid beta transgene with the arctic mutation in conclusion, with the aspect of learning, we can see a reduction of the courtship activity observed in younger male flies with mated females, both in our young Elav control group and our young Alzheimer's group, however, not in our older Elav group. With immediate recall memory, we can see a reduced activity after training compared to our shame control in our young, in, again, both our young Elav group and our young Alzheimer's group. However, this again was not observed in our older Elav flies. We were unable to collect the old AD flies and are still in the process of collecting that data, which we should be able to collect in the upcoming weeks to compare old AD flies with old ELA flies. Okay, so when comparing our study to Lynn et al's group in 2017, there were three main differences. The first were our male flies were singly housed compared to their group housing. Our A-beta-42 transgene had an arctic mutation while theirs did not, and we had an overhead light while they had a dim light setting. The factor that we believe plays a most important role in the courtship index is the fact that our male flies were singly housed due to the fact that male flies will still interact with each other in a courtship behavior uh, even if male flies are not around. So group housing could be a big factor in this. So the future direction is to compare group housing and single housing, increase our sample size, and then eventually look at automated scoring, which I will be discussing next. Okay, so when looking at automated tracking systems, there are two systems that we would utilize. One is C-Tracks, which is where you plug the video into, and then Java reads the video as if we were manually scoring it. To do this, we have to create a personalized well design, and at the bottom of the screen, you can see the evolution from left to right of our well design, first starting with the ceramic wells going all the way to making our own in a 3D printer. The, one, the well on the far right with the two flies in it is the updated design and I have actually included a picture of C-Tracks tracking two flies in that well it, so you can see how the system works and how it is, and how it tracks each individual fly and gives it its own ID. These are the two references that I was able to use in my paper. Okay, so lastly, I want to thank Dr. Lynn for letting me work in her lab this summer and for giving me this opportunity. I would like to thank my two research partners, Michael Leon and Sasha Bronovitsky, for all the help they've given me. And I would like to thank the Embry Program and Coastal Carolina University for funding this summer research program. And thank you all for your time.